Last March, I found myself in our nation's capital, Ottawa for the Canadian, on a panel with esteemed scientists talking about freshwater and the crisis that we all face. How did I get here? Well, for that, I'd like to tell you about mythology, Little Red Riding Hood. If Disney were making this movie, it would look something like this. But the world that we've lived in is a bit more scary. So I want you to remind yourself of the terrible wolf, for I shall return to this story. And now I introduce you to my parents, that is Philippe and Nandi de Nascovovia. I'm the 13th generation born in our country. And every time we have a new generation, the ones before say, okay, what field, what topic are you gonna pick to give back? So back in 2014, my two daughters, Estelle and Ariel, who attend Brentwood, got together with their cousins, my nephews and nieces. Actually, one's missing from this picture, it's Aiden. And they came back to us and they said, well, we've picked water. And then as their papa, I said, uh, girls, what water crisis are you talking about? We live in Canada, the land of fresh water. We have practically a quarter of the fresh water supply of the planet here. How many lakes do we have? Actually, we don't know. The federal government stopped counting. We have over five million lakes. We have rivers that are larger than some countries. What fresh water crisis are you talking about? So they sat down with us and they said, well, let's review the facts. Let me give you one. Put your hand on your wallet. Feel the heft credit cards. You are consuming, on average, five grams of microplastics every week. This means that by the end of the year, you will have consumed 52 credit cards of plastic. And now you're probably saying, but Francois, the plastic comes in, the plastic goes out, there's no problem. <laughs> I wish, I very much wish it were that simple. This came out last March from The Guardian, research paper that was published, and it hit all the major newspapers, New York Globe Mail, New York Times. These microplastics lodge in your organs and for unborn children in the placenta. Il y a un grave problème. So how many of you today, how many of you have microplastics in your body? If you're in a row of 10, eight of you have it, 80%, and that number increases. So the US and Canada have a freshwater crisis, and it's a burning platform. Here's an image of algae. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are a few ducks swimming in the algae. Now, it's the Toronto Zoo. Again, I hear you say, Francois, the Toronto Zoo, the zoo, it's the, 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 the algae. Very good. Well, let's take a look at Lake Winnipeg. Let's take a look at Lake Erie. And for my American friends, Detroit's right up there, Cleveland's right down there. It is an endemic problem across all fresh waters that we face. But on top of all that, we're losing our sources of water. Now, unfortunately, in Canada, we have not been tracking as effectively the retraction of our great glaciers. But in the United States, and here's Penderson Glacier in Alaska, they've been doing a much better job. You've seen this before, but what does it mean? We're losing our ecosystems. On top of that, unprecedented catastrophes. British Columbia, you've seen the floods. It is unconscionable that we have over 30 communities in Canada, G7 nations, that have no drinking water. Inacceptable. But it's not just the elements in the water. We have drought in the Midwest. I was on the phone with my girls last week. There was smoke in the air, fires. So why should you care? I want you to remember this. 
97% of the effects of climate change are water-based, 97%. Now, how does that impact you? Well, your body's under assault. Would you like to lead a long and healthy life? I hope that's a rhetorical question. Not yet maybe for you students, but insurance rates are going up, certainly for your parents and for anybody who's earning a, a wage. The health care bill is going up, that's a for certain. Grocery bills going up, drought, inundations, and the quality of life will be diminished. We, my generation and those before, owe you or you an apology. We screwed up. We were ignorant. We didn't know better. Shame on us. And shame that you now have to bear that brunt, that you have to find the solutions. But all of us are impacted. And time is not our friend. Now, I meet with a lot of chief executive officers, and so I also tailor my messaging to them and talk about what they always look at, which is return on investment. So let's talk about ROI. For my American friends in the audience and those watching, you are living a crisis aujourd'hui, today. And that's self-evident. But let's go through some of the facts. Let's just Google. Just write freshwater crisis in Google. Mississippi, capital, dealing with its fifth water crisis, leaving citizens with dry faucets. Now, for those of you who should know, it's the 13th largest river in the world. 4,000 kilometers long. And if you look at the tributaries, that's most of the continental United States that feeds into the Mississippi. Il y a un grave problème. The other thing is we have, we're connected. And the U.S. Fre freshwater crisis could lead to Washington looking northward. Is Canada ready to quench its thirst? Do you think, do you think that's going to happen or is happening now? Self-evident. I was on the phone with David Ulrich last week. Who is David? one of the preeminent freshwater experts on the planet, living in Chicago. Former co-chair of the Great Lakes Water Quality Board International Joint Commission, and that is just the tip of his iceberg of his expertise. And he shared with me, Francois, we have successfully partnered since the 1909 Boundary Waters Treaty. If we cannot make this work between the United States and Canada, it will not work anywhere else in the world. Benjamin Franklin famously said when he signed the Declaration of Independence, we must all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. I'm telling you, we have to work together to solve this crisis. H2O is CO2. I said it before, I'll repeat it. The majority of climate change is water-based. But it's not just an environmental issue. It's an economic one, too. Just on direct impact on freshwater in our business, in Canada, we're talking about 65 billion a year. And that's direct, not just indirect. Of course, for the US, 10 times our size, run the math. The good news is that if you invest in water, you get back social, environmental, and economic returns, $1.72 for every dollar you invest. Good ROI to my business colleagues. Water is blue gold. Remember that, and remember that we are custodians in Canada of close to a quarter of the fresh water of the planet. So climate change is a water crisis. Don't believe me? Let's go to the experts. After year disasters, it's urgent that we address Canada's climate-caused water crisis. Which brings me to this image. Now you're saying, Francois, how are you going to tie this back to the water crisis? Well, back in 1970, we had another crisis, a lack of fitness. And my papa said to my mom, who he calls Bay, hey, honey, Bay, we have to get Canadians to start getting active. So he launched in Canada participation. For those of us with gray hairs, we remember that. And the concept was to educate Canadians that the average 82-year-old Swede was in better shape than the 32-year-old Canadian. That was participation get you physically active, get you moving. Today, we take that for granted, the importance of fitness. So I took this challenge, an opportunity that my father created, and I said, how do we address the freshwater crisis? Well, 
Merci Papa, I took a page out of his book and we launched Aqua Action. So what do we stand for? Our mandate is quite simple. We want to restore freshwater health in North America. How do we do that? We go to all the municipalities and we say to them, what are your top 10 freshwater challenges? Then we go across all the universities in Canada to young tech innovators and we say, can you help us solve these issues, these freshwater challenges through technology? We're a nonprofit, but we're here to help you fix, help us fix the problem. So we are engaging youth, stewards of tech and innovation. We do municipal, provincial, federal, for-profit, non-profit, bring them all together, pan-Canadian, and we focus 100% water-related, solutions-driven, action-oriented, results-based. So how have we done? The family, we put in a million a year, past eight years. What have we done? 10 tech challenges across the country, 20 water issues have been addressed, 2,000 innovators engaged, 36 active startups focused on the challenges we all face. And by the way, 52% led by women. We have great partners, RBC, IBM, Ovivo, but the reality, my friends, is that if you don't care, it will never happen. I go to Ottawa regularly, meet with the ministers, and they say, Francois, we think what you're doing is great, but if the voters don't care, it doesn't get on the docket. So we launched a national campaign last March to start educating Canadians at what's at stake. One of these companies I own, Zim TV, we're running it all the time. Mark my words, I'm making this my mission to educate people across our country and soon south, because we're going to Chicago next year, entering the United States. We have to work together to solve the crisis. I can't tell you how proud I am of your generation. It's your generation that's finding the solutions, coming together and innovating. The future of water depends on solutions that we develop today. Make no mistake, it is urgent that we address this maintenant, now. Let me give you three examples out of the 36. Can forecast. What they do, well actually when you go to your dorm tonight or if you go home and you turn on the faucet, <coughs> put the glass of water in, do you know that all that water has been treated? But a third never gets to your glass. A third, pipes broken, pipes leaking. Can forecast takes all the data and predicts with a 97.8 reliability where the pipe will break next. So the city, municipality, can send in, fix the pipe before it breaks. Geosapiens takes the AI, takes all the data, where inundations are going to have, floods in English, where they're going to happen next. And what's amazing is that insurance companies are now investing in Geosapiens, obviously protecting monetary kickback, but also lives. We're a nonprofit, but we help create companies to solve the issues. Water Rangers enables you as citizens to go test your water. We're lacking data across the country. Power back in your hands. These are the faces of the future of water. These are your faces. The youth today are solving the issues that we created. And we're grateful, I am very grateful, that all these smart people are coming to the table to fix the challenge. We as a family have taken this as our, our mandate, number one priority. But we cannot do this without you. Remember the tale of Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf? We as a species have faced these challenges before. What did we do with the wolf? We tamed the wolf. The wolf now is our best friend. So when I was in Ottawa, Elder Claudette, commander of the Algonquin Nation, said, we borrow this land from our children. When you go home tonight, I want you to look in that mirror. I want you to think about purpose and why we're here. 
I want to think about, I, want, I do want you to think about yourself. It's important. But more importantly, I want you to think about those you love. Those who will come after us. What will be your legacy? In what state will we leave the world for them? And so I urge you, please, to take action, to take aqua action. Go to www.aquaaction.org, sign up. The more voices are heard, the more impact we will have. Thank you. Merci.